Hello and welcome to Holy Fury. You have come here on a glorious day. For today, we choose the tenets of our new religion. We, in this series, are going to create our religion. It's going to be about fighting and war. Because that is what we are about. We are going to conquest as much as possible. And we are going to make people believe in our gods. And that's what we're going to do. You may, however, notice that this series is coming out a little bit earlier than the DLC's release. It's three days earlier, so we have to say thank you to Paradox for providing the key and for letting me play it a little bit early. So, let's get right into it. The most important thing, our religion. So, right now, we can't reform. Because, well, we don't have any of the requirements for reforming. There are many, many requirements for reforming, and we have none of them. But, we can choose what we're going to do when we reform. So, first off, we get to choose a nature, two doctrines, and leadership. So, nature is kind of how you generally are. Doctrines are things that you can do. Leadership is who leads you. So, our nature. We are many natures to choose from, but as I previously stated, we're going to make people believe in our gods. We are warmongering. We are completely warmongering. There are many other options that we could choose from. And many of them are interesting, but warmongering is the one we're going with. Uh, I did actually want to read its things, but apparently you can't read them after you've chosen them. Right. Rulers do not receive opinion penalties for raised vassal levies. Great holy wars are allowed, and rulers are extremely aggressive. Our only way forward is paved with the skulls of our enemies. Only by showing their bravery in battle, the faithful can hope to be rewarded in the afterlife. That's what we're going to be doing. Next up. Well, now we're warmongering. What else could we need to do? Well, it's right down here at the bottom. Well, near the bottom. We're going to have bloodthirsty gods. Prisoners of a different religion can be sacrificed for piety. Sacrificing prisoners unlocks special traits and actions. Our heavenly masters are cruel and ever thirsty. If we do not placate their hunger for flesh, blood, and souls, they will turn their wrath upon us. Definitely seems like where we want to go. I'm just going to scroll through them in case you're interested in what the others are. But we're definitely bloodthirsty. And the other one? Well, our other one, if I can remember what I previously did, looked at here. Ah, daring is potential. Unrelenting is more like it. I think it's unrelenting. Yes. Unless what's this one? Uh, no. No, no, no. Right. Unrelenting. Armies ignore defensive attrition. Armies have increased offensive capabilities. The gods will only reward the bravest and most fierce amongst the faithful. To die in battle is the greatest of honors a man can aspire to. So, we're warmongering, our gods are bloodthirsty, and we are unrelenting. Our leadership? Well, our leadership is going to be the reformer. We are going to lead. Just to have a look at what the other ones are. We could have a priest. We could have um, priests are put in charge of religions. No, 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 no. We are going to be in charge once we reform the faith. However, we're a little bit off that. We do need to increase our moral authority. That's kind of step number one. Moral authority is pretty low. It can go up for many things, mostly holy sites and holy wars. Holy sites, if we control all five, we are at 50% and we can reform. So that's good. We just need to go and get... I had three more of those. Easy enough. What else do we need? Well, uh, we need to control, personally, three of them. Okay, that's possible. We need 750 piety. Well, that's going to come in time. We also need um, all of... Why does it have... Oh, no, those are just the holy sites that's listed below. There's actually not that many requirements. That's okay. Right, that is our reformation. That's what we're going to go with. However, before we get to that... We are right down here. We're a very small little county. We're in Memel. And that's, uh, yeah, it's not very strong. It's not very strong at all. So, we need to become stronger. And we're going to do that pretty much by warring. We do have a child, which is very nice. We have a, a Veduti over here. If I'm saying any of these wrong, please let me know. And I will uh, try and correct uh, course as we go on. Uh, but yes, we have a child, which is very good. Because it means we don't have to worry about... Well, us dying and not having an heir. Our heir should marry, but apart from that, we're not too worried. What is our succession law? That's kind of like the next thing that you want to check here. It's eldership. Okay, so um, this is as long as the elders are satisfied with your leadership, they will tend to favor your candidate. If the elders are displeased, they may pick a candidate that's not to your liking. 
only males can inherit. It's the oldest and wisest members of the tribe deciding things. Okay, interesting. So, we actually don't have any elders currently. So, I'm going to nominate my son. And we are the only elector currently, according to this. I also think this, I believe this is a new um, succession law, which is pretty cool. Uh, other stuff seems pretty much normal for being a tribe. So we'll leave that alone. We need to do our council. So council here. We have our son on it. That's all right. Um, looks like our council's relatively all right. We have a really good marshal. So I'm going to use him to train troops over here in Memel. Um, next, what I'm going to do is build legend. Build legend basically gives you a chance of getting warriors raised, which would be great because it would give us a chance to declare wars. Uh, spy master, that's fine. You can do spy mastery things. Build zeal. So this would get us religious holy warriors. Now, what's the religion like? Religion right now is pretty much all our religion, so we don't really need that. That doesn't. That's not going to give us anything. Proven religious relations again, not really going to give us anything. Converting. Uh, all the land is currently converted, so we don't need to worry. So they can just hunt apostates, get us some monthly piety towards that 750 we need. And our chancellor, he's just going to perform statecraft. Don't really need to do anything with him right now. Nothing to worry about. Um, other things, designated regent, that's going to be our son. Court physician is going to be, well, you know what? It could be this guy, but I'm just going to make our son our court physician as well. We're going to give him a lot of jobs. We could choose a court tutor, but we're not really large enough that we're worried about that right now. Just checking we have the best commanders available. There are some better ones available. Well, one better one. That's okay. Um, there's my council, again, in case you need to see them. And now, back to us. So, if you did not see this series earlier in the day where we were playing as Scotland, you may not have seen that there's a whole bunch of new UI changes. Over on the right hand side, we have one that's going to be very important to us. Personal combat skill. We're going to be going into battle ourselves. We want that to be high because there are duels when you are leading uh, troops, basically. That needs to be high. It also kind of deals with all of that kind of dueling stuff. This was in the game previously, but it's now been changed and it is now out of 100 opposed to whatever it was out of before. There's also this Bloodlines one. Now, uh, let's see if I can find somebody who has a Bloodline in one click. Uh, no, we are playing on early um, map mode, so, well, not er early map mode, that's the wrong way of putting it. We're playing on an early bookmark, so there might not be anybody who has a bloodline, because we might be too early for that. Because nobody is, oh, no, there we go. Ah, we have a Carling with a bloodline, he's got Carlingian blood. Perfect. There you go, it's bloodlines, they basically give you bonuses um, based upon your ancestors' things that they did. And there are a couple different things that tell you how it passes down to other people. We're not going to be worried about that, although our children will be very worried about how fantastic... Well, not worried. They'll be very happy with how fantastic their bloodline is. Hopefully. If we're not dead. One that's going to be important to us is there's now a kill list. So, um, every character you kill will go into this list. We're going to be keeping track of that. There is also a new ledger page. Uh, if we have a look here. Just to give you the best of all time. And, yeah, that's about it. If I go to another one here, actually, there are some other things. We can antagonize and sway. That's basically make people like you and make people not like you. Very straightforward stuff. And they redesigned the UI a little bit, but that's okay. Right. Other things. What do we need to do? Don't need to change any of our laws. I'm pretty happy with how our laws are currently. Technology. Don't need to change any of that. Military. Don't need to change any of that. Here, we have all sorts of things. Worship the Ancestors sounds interesting. Can only be done every 10th year. That seems like something we should do. And begin preparations for a sacrifice. That sounds absolutely fantastic. We'll do that in just a second. Don't have any factions. I don't think we even have any vassals. Yeah, we have no vassals whatsoever. Um, there's our religion. And we could join a society, the Band of uh, Medinia. Worshipped by hunters and warriors alike, Medinia is the huntress goddess of the forest. Her followers wear wolf pelts in her image and hold hairs ho uh, holy as Medina is known to send the animal out to lure away the unworthy out of her domain. The warriors of Medina have one simple calling, to protect the forest, their home, and the true legacy of their ancestors. You know what? We are going to join it, because that sounds pretty cool. Okay. Chief... Balodis of Zemeteji, uh, of the band of Medina, Medina, greets me with a brief nod. Another recruit, huh? To join our ranks, you need to prove yourself, boy. The man says gruffly, folding his arms across his chest. You'd be fighting one of our own. 
Still interested, my lord. Let's have a look at his personal combat skill. He, he's got a lot of personal combat skill. Ours is not bad. Ours is 18. We've got some ability to fight. We're quite skilled as a tactician. We're patient. Uh, okay. You know what? Uh, I can say I'd You know what? I am going to fight. I'll fight to prove myself. See how that goes in just a second. Other things we need to do. Ambitions. Um, what's this one? Strengthen the religion. Well, that seems pretty good. Yeah. To do, you have to do many things. Well, one of those sounds great. Um, anything else sound good there? You know what? No, I'm just going to take strength in the religion. We can succeed in that. That'll be good. Our focus, uh, I think, should be war. It also gives us personal combat skill, which is very nice. Uh, special actions. We're going to make Memel our crown focus. It basically increase pro makes the pro uh, province prosper some more. And once we finish our duel, we're going to worship the ancestors. Right. Let's unpause the game and get into our duel. Okay. Chief Balodis of Zemeteji and the Band of Medina have chosen Karatis as my opponent. The young man eyes me up and down when we are introduced. Fresh meat, eh? He offers mockingly before shoving an elbow into my side, making everyone laugh. Okay, he's slightly worse at fights than us. This is a good chance. A fight for glory, huh? The duel will take place within the next few days. Oh, there we go. The fight has gone on for what feels like hours. The initial confidence I felt has begun to wane and my movements are getting sloppy. Then, just as my knees are about to give under me, I swing my dull spear in a perfect half circle, causing him to fall backwards with a surprised hoof. Right, I walk away victorious. We have won the duel. We've gained prestige. We've gained monthly prestige because everybody knows how great we are. That's for pretty much a year. He gets a swollen ankle, just a minor little problem. And our dual experience, whatever that means, has increased. I assume that's basically a hidden thing in the background that makes us better at dueling because we have dueled. That sounds cool. Right, so now we've done that, I think it's perfect time to worship the ancestors. You've decided to visit the shrine in the Holy Grove and make a sacrifice in the honor of your ancestors, hoping for their aid in return. What shall you ask of your forefathers? Well, obviously, guide my sword in battle and let me conquer my enemies. See how that goes. Okay. You asked your ancestors for military power and prowess in battle. Now it's time to present your offering. What will you give them in return? Ooh, we can give them a feast, or we could just give them an eye. You know what? Straight off, I think that sounds epic as a great way to start a new religion. Oh, great forefathers, I willingly offer you my flesh and blood. Okay. You lay down on the offering stone, bracing yourself for the ritual. Thankfully, the wolf's knife is sharp, and soon the stone is dark with your blood. Your agonized screams will surely please the ancestor. Now all you can do is wait and hope. May the ancestors bestow their blessing upon me. We're one-eyed, we're severely injured. Is this, uh, we can pick a patron deity. Oh, we didn't have piety uh, before now. Alright, I was trying to figure out why our skin looked a little bit blotchy, but I think we're okay. I don't think anything too bad there. Right. Just uh, see whether the ancestors are happy. Ooh, to the valiant high chief uh, Vivuti of Scalva. I'm told you did not receive a single scratch during your initiation. That is the kind of impressive fighter we would be honored to have sitting at our table. You're hereby humbly invited to join our ranks. Signed, Chief Balodis of Zemeteji. We have now joined the band, which apparently means we have to go bald, but that's okay. We've got our bald eye patch thing going. That's pretty cool. What are we now? We're fledgling. So we're able to duel people. We're able to appoint shield maidens, uh, provided they are my sister or my daughter. Unlikely to get a sister at this point, given that I don't think our parents are actually loaded into the game. No. But a daughter? That's still not completely out. Our wife is 35. Not great chance there, but we could get a concubine. Um, Okay, so we could do that. Survivor, you're more resilient to battle uh, injuries. Well, that's nice because we just got one. And power, lifetime of war. When leading troops, your experience gives you access to new events in the field of battle. That's lovely. Oh, cool. We'll need to see what we get later. Um, Now, we have to pick a patron deity. Let's do that. There are many um, deities who you can follow. The supreme ruler, our divine, our, our father Devias, or his ambitious brother uh, Vilnius, god of the underworld. For luck and war, pray to uh, Perkunas, god of thunder, 
Zemena, uh, the Earth Goddess, blesses her faithful with fertility and good harvest. Well, obviously, we're going to um, pray to Perkunas. I'll bring you honor on the battlefield, mighty Perkunas. Again, pushing up that marshal, making us look stronger. Perkunas is the god of thunder. He rides the skies in his chariot with his magic axe in his hand. His eternal enemy is Vilnaeus the serpent, lord of the underworld, who he protects us from. Those who are faithful to Perkunas will be given his courage and success. I hope to prove myself a worthy follower. Okay, now we have thoroughly pleased the ancestors. Our personal combat's a little low because we are severely injured and one-eyed, but it will go back up there in time. I think it's time to declare a war, maybe. See how many men we have. We have up to 900. There are some people nearby us um, who have a little bit less troops, but have some vassals. And the vassals and tribal ones can be called in, which is a little bit unfortunate. I think we perhaps need an alliance, and perhaps this is where our son could come in handy. Let's see if there are any people nearby us um, who we can get an alliance with. I'm just going to do a quick kind of look like this. You know what might be a better way of looking? I'll just decide who I want an alliance with and we'll get one. Uh, where are the holy sites actually for us as well? we got three that are very close. This one's a little bit further away. Where's the other one? It should be five holy sites. Oh, is this it over here? I think it is. I think this island is a holy site. Yeah, Rana. Okay. That's fine. We'll need to get that at some point as well. So, I don't really want to be friends with anybody who has a holy site, but everyone else is fine. Maybe Lithuania would be a good person to be a friend with. He has a daughter. He, the daughter is only 12, but our son is only 20. So, in four years' time, that would be fine. Let's get ourselves a betrothal. No. Political concerns. You know what? That's fair. That's fair. Okay, how about, uh, Coronia? Uh, do you have a daughter? No, you have a sibling, who is, uh, the person who's in charge of my society, I think. Uh, yes, yes he is, but that's fine. Uh, neither of them are children. That is another daughter, but we're gonna get a no offer from this one, I'm almost certain. Yep. Actually, that's not too far off. Uh, it's still a lot off, but it's not too far. Not as far as I thought it would be. We have another uh, daughter over here, 11 years old. Let's see if we got anything there. Uh, they all have a lot of political concerns. I'm not too worried of marrying outside our religion right now, as long as it's within our religious group. Let's go a little bit further. Let's see if anybody out here has any daughters available for us. Uh, it looks like the answer is going to be no, but that's okay. How about... There, no. Okay. We'll go a little bit south. Anybody? Uh, anybody got a daughter who isn't uh, zero years old? Okay. Gertruda? Try that one. I say yes. Okay. Uh, do we want to marry her? Potentially, yeah. That doesn't seem too bad. An alliance with Pomerania seems very sensible for us, actually. They're, uh, they're in between somebody we want to attack and us. Yeah, that seems good. And he also has a vassal who is... Uh, I mean, he's not the strongest guy in the world, but he'll do for just now. I would like my son to marry your daughter. There we go. Yes, fantastic. Get that going. All right, unpause. And that is happening. Fantastic. Uh, I now need an alliance with you. No, he doesn't really like me very much. Well, I'm sorry, but... You're going to need to like me at some point. Uh, what could we offer him for an alliance? We could offer him a concubine. You could have Rose. Is that going to increase his opinion of us? I don't know. But Rose is also my spy master, so I don't really want to throw that in there. Okay, we'll offer him some gold. And yes, we'll form that alliance. You've told... You've toiled devoutly in your endeavor to follow the path of uh, Perkunas. In his name, you have practiced your axemanship and spent many hours uh, strategizing at the war table with your commanders. As a result, your martial skills have been improving. I hope to be worthy of this blessing. Exactly. We now have an alliance. Lovely. Now, we have to punch above our weight and basically attack someone. This one, uh, he only has a thousand troops. 
effectively. Just over 1,000 true. 1,200. We have 800 going up to 1,000. There's potential there. Are there any mercenaries we can hire? Probably not. No, no mercenaries. Let's try to figure out if there's any way that we can potentially get a slightly stronger um, war going here. Don't think that there is. We could wait for our military to become better, and I think that might be the only option. The other option is, do we have any retinues we can get for prestige? No. But well, actually, we should be able to get ones for prestige, right? Uh, 25. Why can we not? Oh, because our retinue cap is 7. That's why we can't get any. I'm going to wait for our retinue to just go up a little bit. Through staged war games and large-scale ex exercises, I feel confident I can uh, master one of the main military disciplines. Um, let's be realistic. It's probably a light fruit leader given our army composition, but let's have a look here. See what we got. Uh, if I raise them up, we have mostly a light infantry army. Okay, so we'll, we'll go with light infantry leader. It's okay. Grab that. That's going to make us better in fighting. Let's have a look here. Um, he's getting a little bit stronger, but are we up at our limit now? No, we haven't got stronger at all. Okay, how are we looking now? We're about 900. He is getting a little bit stronger. How about his vassal? As long as his vassal stays weak, we're okay. Maybe we don't want to be the first person to pull a punch here. Or, or to go for a punch here, but that's fine. If we attack, there's always a chance everyone attacks us. Do we actually have a CB? Just to check. Yes, we do. We can just subjugate him entirely. Okay. There's potential for that to be a good idea. How many men does he have now? Mm, a little bit more. We could hold off for top... Um, oh, Rose is also my wife. Yeah, probably good I didn't give... Wait. Do we have two Roses? We do have Rose the Spy Master and Rose the Wife. Oh. That's not confusing at all. Actually, that's very confusing. But whatever. That's fine. Both of them are called Rose. That's fine. Wait, uh, just a little bit. Are we ready for a war? 900 versus a lot more. I think we are. I think we're going to go for a war. Subjugation. Declared it. Can't back out now. Raise our troops. Merge up in our capital. Call in our ally. And let's see where we go. Yeah, let's merge up. Okay, that's fine. Uh, make sure that we are leading, obviously. Yeah, can we split up this army anymore? No. So we are always going to have a weak flank. That's unfortunate. Um, so these are my commanders right now. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I was going to wonder if I could get my son to lead, but I guess not. Uh, I am going to get the better commander to lead, though. And I'm going to try... Oh, can I attack this army? Uh, I'm not going to get there in time. Uh, is Pomeranius going to say yes? I hope they will. Yeah, perfect. We're just going to tell them to come merge up with us. And we're going to walk around to Marienburg. With my wife Rose pregnant, I'm starting to worry if I shouldn't organize something special for this year's harvest rite. Pleasing um, Zemenia could be instrumental to, the, to ensure the birth of a healthy child. I'll dedicate the entire festival to her, make a larger sacrifice, or waste no money. I'm going to dedicate the entire festival to Rose. Definitely. My wife was thrilled to take the role of Zem uh, Zemina for the festival. She has been very popular with the public, maintaining a cheerful demeanor, and always smiling at everyone. Hopefully this will both help her deliver a strong child, as well as spread the goddess's blessing across my lands. I'm sure this will help her deliver the child. I'm sure of it. Right. Looks like they are coming over to us. I think we do wait, although I am a little worried about our, um, well, tribe getting destroyed. I'm going to walk over here and see what we can do with that. How quickly is he going to siege? 12%. We actually have time to wait. Okay. Where are you going? Oh, you're just going straight for the fight. Okay, maybe not. Oh, no, he's coming to us. I have to give my advice on a delicate matter. The courtier um, asked to... Uh, asked me to accept a small gift of gold as thanks for my uh, as thanks for my help. Yeah, I'll accept it reluctantly. That's okay. Yeah, being charitable is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, we are gonna merge up on the 17th. That's fine. And then attack in. Okay, he gets a little bit of defenses in the hill, but I think we've got him. I think we have him. Uh, when's the siege going to finish? Oh, yeah, we're going to get them way before the siege finishes. 
A sudden shooting pain strikes at your chest. After a moment of agony, it passes. For now. Oh no, we have chest pains and we're severely injured. We have minus four health. We're just gonna die. Uh, Viduti, um... Shall I soon us? Is confident that your symptom is not due to a serious illness and that will pass quite soon when we die. Nevertheless, you will receive some mild treatment. Okay, very well. And let's attack in. Um, he insists that the foul smell of civilization made you sick and ordered you to take daily walks in the wilderness. Well, I'm not sure that did anything. Okay. We are now in the battle. We are, of course, still leading. Doesn't matter if we're weak, we're still leading. It's okay. Looks like all of our flanks are more men. It should go fairly well for us. Uh, Zygamantus is a belligerent commander, fighting with the strength of a dragon. Not that anyone is keeping count, but I find myself wondering how many enemies he has taken down single-handedly at this point. Save uh, some for me, will ya? I call across the hills. Then say he's a one-man army and that I, he has impressed me, or I can become ambitious and envious. You know what? We're gonna res we're gonna respect him. He is an, a, a brilliant leader for our army. Yes, he is a one-man army. I have he has impressed me. Fantastic. Let us continue. One moment you're shivering, the next you're sweating. Overall, you feel awful. Minus five health. Oh dear. Not feeling good. Thinks our symptoms point to pneumonia. He insists you should follow his instructions. Oh no. After what seems like forever, your wound from your maiming is completely healed. In the middle of the battle! Oh, that is fantastic. We go to Scarred. What's great is we're no longer severely injured, so we only have negative three health. Which is, still is a little worrying. For your chest pains, Viduti told you to sleep with your door open. You have to let the spirits in, he said. Um, I'm not sure sleeping with the door open is the best cure to, for a pneumonia I've ever heard, but okay. Let's continue our battle. Uh, it looks like our flank without a leader is winning, like the hardest. We're about to win ours after it. Fantastic, and then we can go and help uh, Zygamantus. And that is our first battle won. We have taken a very small amount of casualties, and they have lost 400 men. And with that, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. As this is the first episode of our Rise to Power... It's my opportunity to remind you that if you comment, subscribe, like the video, it will help the channel grow and it will help the series grow and in turn help our religion grow. Thank you for watching. Oh yes, I should mention there is another series for the Holy Fury. It happened about an hour ago at this point and you can go and watch it now. It's the Saintly Scots and we are taking a much slower approach to things in that one. And then... This series will be coming back tonight at 6pm GMT, and you can see it then. And there's another Saintly Scots episode right before it. So thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, goodbye.